All right, we are on um, 2.1 in trig, and and that is the coordinate plane. So let's take a look at the coordinate plane here. So you got coordinate systems. This is something you've been working on in algebra for an incredibly long time, so most of you should know this stuff anyway. But if this is your coordinate plane, um, this section over here is the first quadrant and it goes counterclockwise so this over here is your quadrant two this over here is quadrant three and this down here is quadrant four <clears throat> you have the x-axis which is this line right here which makes this the y-axis going up and down here <clears throat> every single point is done according to an x and a y so X means you're going over left or right, and Y means you're going up or down a certain amount. So like the point 2, 3, I would go over from the center, 1, 2, and up 1, 2, 3, and plot my point. So this is just a little recap here, right? Remember, left or right, Y is up and down. And moving to the left is a negative number and moving to the right is a positive number, moving up is positive, moving down is negative. <clears throat> ordered pairs, that's just like your x and your y, okay, so that's what this is saying, an ordered pair is two numbers, um, so it's also an interval containing the x and the y is something else to write down there, an ordered pair is also an interval containing an x and a y. Some other definitions, the quadrants, there are four of them, that's what we were just talking about there. Um, the origin, <clears throat> the origin is the point in the center, zero, zero. That's your goal, uh, that's your origin, okay? The very center of the graph, zero, zero is the origin. Did you see the memo about this? So, the distance formula, make sure you write this down because this is very important, okay? Uh, the distance formula is used with two coordinates. Okay, two x's and two y's. That's why I have a little two and a little one there, so we can uh, differentiate between which point we are talking about. So um, it's x two minus x one squared plus y two minus y one uh, squared, all square rooted. Mentos, the fresh maker. So we have the points. A is negative three six and B is five one. So we were supposed to find the distance between the two. <clears throat> So I'm just going to plot them for you so you can get a little gist of that again. Uh, the point negative 3, 6 means I go over 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I put a point. That's A. And point B is 5, 1, so I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, and there is B, and I just connect them with a line. So there's our distance formula. And this is x1, this is y1, this is your x2, this is your y2. I like to label them to make it easier to plug stuff in. So all we're going to do is literally substitution. So x2, 5, negative 3, 1, 6. <clears throat> all you're doing is plugging it all in. Minus a negative is like saying plus. So that's 5 plus 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. 8 squared is 64. Negative 5 squared is 25. And when you add them together, you get the square root of 89, which is approximately 9.43. So the distance between here and here is about 9.43. Now granted, yes, on a coordinate plane, if it was a straight line, you could just count the blocks, and that would be enough. But this isn't over all of the blocks, so you can't just count it. So it's just something else to keep in mind. Okay, <clears throat> moving on here to example two. So we have another coordinate plane there. It says plot the points negative one, negative three, six, one, and two, negative five, and show that the triangle is right. So we want to show that it's a right triangle. So I'm going to plot the points here. Negative one, one, two, three, so there's one point. B is one, two, three, four, five, six, one. So I'll plot that point. And C is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or sorry, over this way 2, 
one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so I connect them all to make a triangle, and here they are. Now, if you were to guess before we even start this problem, which angle do you think is going to be the right angle? Do you think angle A, angle B, or angle C? Well, in my personal opinion, it's not going to be A because it looks like it's less than 90 degrees and a right angle is 90 degrees. B, once again, looks too small, so that only leaves us with the possibility of C being that right angle. So I want to look at the lines AC and BC. So what do we know about right angles? The lines are perpendicular. That's what we need to find out. So this line right here, AC, and this line right here, BC, I want to prove that they're perpendicular. If these two lines are perpendicular, then that means that this angle is a right angle. And if that's a right angle, then that means we have a right triangle. So we're basically trying to tiptoe through and prove this. So I need to prove that these two lines are perpendicular. So AC and BC are perpendicular. And what do we know about perpendicular lines? The slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay, if you remember from before, slopes are opposite reciprocals. So the slopes of these two lines, we need to make sure that they are opposite reciprocals. And this is an example of opposite reciprocals, right? 2 and 1 over negative 2. Those are opposites because one's positive, one's negative, and reciprocal means you flip it. Let me move that up there. And there's another example, 1, negative 3, and 3. Those are opposite reciprocals. So let's find the slope of the lines. So according to the graph from before, I want to look at AC and BC, which means the slopes are opposite reciprocals. Then we have a right triangle. So there is AC, right? So x1, y1, x2, and y2. So I'm going to use the slope formula to find the slope of line AC. So I'm putting it into this formula, which we should all know the formula for slope. Okay. So it's negative 5 minus negative 3 over 2 minus negative 1. Those become plus a positive. So it's a negative 2 on top because 5 plus 3 is negative 2, and that is a 3 on the bottom. So there is AC. So now we need to take a look at BC. So B is 6, 1, C is 2, negative 5. So now this is x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2. So when I plug it into the slope formula, I get negative 5 minus 1 and 2 minus 6, which gives me negative 6 over negative 4. Two negatives make a positive there, so it's really 6 over 4, which simplifies to 3 over 2. So are these opposite reciprocals? Well, this is negative, this is positive, so they are opposite. Reciprocal is just the flip of it. So if this is 2 over 3, this is 3 over 2. So yes, they are opposite reciprocals. Because they are opposite reciprocals, that means the angles are perpendicular, or the lines are perpendicular. And because the lines are perpendicular, that means a right angle is formed. And because a right angle is formed, that means we have a right triangle. So we want to find the area of that triangle, and the formula for area is 1 half times the base times the height. So in order to find the area, we need to find the distance, okay? And when we come back, we will find the distance then um, and figure out what the area is of the triangle in example 2.